The Global Index on Responsible AI is a new instrument being designed to support decision makers and stakeholders from around the world to develop and use AI that respects human rights and strengthens democracy. AI is having a significant impact on almost every aspect of our daily lives. But while AI can drive innovations that improve access to healthcare for millions of citizens, it can also power mass surveillance or potentially undermine civil liberties. The Global Index on Responsible AI will provide much needed insight into the conditions required to ensure AI supports human rights, gender equality, and sustainable development. By establishing an international network of independent researchers, the Global Index will assess progress towards responsible AI in over 120 countries. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for the announcement of the new Global Index on Responsible AI, a new tool that intends to help to move from principles to practice in responsible AI around the world. Uh, my name is Fernando Perini from the Canadian uh, International Development Research Centre, and I've been the facilitator for this event. On behalf of uh, DD4D Network, uh, Research ICT Africa, AI4D, and IDRC, I would like to welcome you all, and it is a real pleasure to have you all here. Uh, we are excited to have uh, an amazing set of partners championing this new initiative, and we will hear directly from some of these partners here today. Uh, in our agenda today, we will have opening remarks from governments of uh, Republic of South Africa, uh, Canada, and IDRC. And when we, we and then we will learn more about the global index itself from the team that is leading this work, and we will discuss with a panel with uh, key participants in this ecosystem, including UNESCO, OECD, GPA, and civil society and researchers from the global south. Uh, they will help us to explore what is uh, this new index, uh, what it should be, uh, what we need, why we need it now, and how it can help us in our agenda. Uh, also, we, we want to hear from you. Uh, I will be responsible for making sure that we collect your views and perspectives during this uh, event. I'm looking forward to a very interactive uh, discussion with you all. Uh, but before we start, though, a few uh, housekeeping items that I'd like to share with you. Uh, this session is being recorded for future use. Uh, the meeting will be conducted in English. Uh, interpretation is available in French and Spanish based on the language of you selected on entering the event. And uh, if you have experience of any technical difficulties, please, please click on the question mark icon in your screen and where you can uh, describe the issue that you have and immediate assistance will be provided to you by email. Uh, uh, to have our participation and design this new index, we will use also, this uh, this slide uh, function in your in your browser. You can join the conversation there by clicking on the slide icon on the navigation bar of your webcast player. There, you can find two features. There, uh, there is a poll and a Q and A. Uh, the poll you have uh, one open now. Uh, please enter just to start the conversation, and so we can have an idea on what sec sector you are working in. And there's also a Q&A tab there, and you can use that if you have any questions during the session. Of course, we look forward to hearing from you in the language of your choice in the slide. And now that, uh, and basically the, these are the housekeeping notes. Uh, and so I would like to formally start uh, by this the event by inviting our honorable Puti uh, Manamela, Deputy Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation from the Republic of South Africa, to provide some opening remarks. After the Deputy Minister, uh, we will have uh, remarks from Dominique Sharon, VP of Program of Partnerships for IDRC, and Catherine Godin, uh, Director General Office of Human Rights, Freedom and Inclusion at uh, Global Affairs Canada. Uh, Deputy Minister Manamela, we are honored to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Uh, let me firstly uh, start by extending our uh, apologies on behalf of our minister 
who had really wanted to be here, but uh, because of other unexpected uh, 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 situations, he couldn't make it. Uh, let me extend my greetings to the representatives from uh, Government Affairs uh, Canada and the International Research Development Center, the representatives from the Department of Science and Innovation, distinguished speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our minister, it is my honor to address you on the occasion of the announcement of the new Global Inten Index on Responsible Artificial Intelligence. The South African government is delighted to be on this platform with Global Affairs Canada, who have played, in our view, a leading role in supporting the development of research forums and global uh, uh, government governance uh, mechanisms to redress and even distribution of benefits and harms associated with the advance of data-driven technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. Artificial intelligence is having a major impact on every aspect of our lives and every sector of our economies. Its capacity to make sense of great magnitude of data and information offers unprecedented insights with which to make better more informed decisions and even significantly advance our progress I mean, our progress towards the realization of sustainable development uh, goals. Yet, without major steer, artificial intelligence has the potential to worsen inequality and undermine democracy. Deliberative and diverse thinking and strategies are needed to ensure that these cutting edge technologies are put to work for the benefit of all, wherever you are in the world. This initiative to establish a new global inter index on responsible we are okay i'm back now can you hear me we are we are particularly proud that a global initiative this is probably one of the uh, inequalities of globally there's having a bit of a technical issue with the audio there uh deputy minister it's been <laughs> We're particularly proud that a global initiative of this nature is being led by formidable African and Global South partnership, probably for the first time. Based in South Africa, Research ICT Africa has been a pillar of African research and practice on digital policy and regulation for, for over a decade, making it well placed uh, to lead a consortium of partners and uh, I mean, of partners and institutions in designing and implementing an inclusive framework for measuring responsible artificial intelligence in countries around the world. As the South African Department of Science and Innovation, we're particularly uh, committed to supporting South Africa and African leadership in science and championing African voices in shaping global debates. South Africa is a country founded on the promotion of a culture of human rights, participatory democracy, and upholding the dignity of all human beings. I'm therefore delighted the South African researchers are playing a, re a leading role together with partners from other African countries uh, and from the global south in shaping the global agenda to advance human rights in the governance of artificial intelligence. We continue to strongly support the global agenda for more equitable and more just um, and more just governance of artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. We are therefore fully committed to support the uh, I mean UNESCO in the implementation of its recently adopted landmark recommendations of the ethics of artificial intelligence. Let me also take this opportunity to thank I think we have a bit of an issue with the audio there. A commitment to support recent capacity. The IDRC has been recently it has been I think yeah uh, 
<laughs> yes, I, I think we're going to have to to to. It seems that we have the connection uh, lost there. Uh, we will. Vuti, I guess you're going to have to do just your final words to make sure yeah, that you have your back in the yeah, connection. Just, just in, yeah, just in closing, I really want to affirm uh, the importance of coming together as an international com community to find ways for ensuring that new technologies, uh, uh, I mean, new technologies uh, that we design and develop do not harm our people, our environment, and in doing so, we can enable an equal distribution of the opportunities and benefits of artificial intelligence. We'll also discuss these topics at the World Science Forum in 2022, which we will host in Cape Town in December 2022, under the theme of Science for Social Justice, and to which you are all invited. Thank you very much for listening. Many thanks, Deputy Minister. Excellent. Uh, thank you. I'll hand it over to Dominic. Uh, Vice President of uh, Program and Partnerships at ADRC. Thank you, Fernando, and thank you, Deputy Minister Manamela, for honoring us and joining us today for this uh, announcement. As IDRC, we remain committed to working together with Republic of South Africa through scientific collaboration on this and in other areas. And South Africa's leadership in the field of artificial intelligence and its responsible application to improve the lives of people is uh, clear. And as the world adopts more and more of these technologies, leadership of Africa to African countries is essential to help uh, manage some of the downsides while also promoting the potential, great potential for the positive impact. So, Thank you again, uh, Deputy Minister Manamela, for joining us this morning. As Fernando uh, said, my name is Dominique Charon, and I am the Vice President of Programs and Partnerships at Canada's International Development Research Centre. And as part of Canada's international assistance efforts, IDRC supports and collaborates with researchers in developing regions of the world across the global south to tackle local and global development challenges. I'm going to be speaking a bit in French. There is simultaneous translation uh, uh, if you require it. J'aimerais tout d'abord souligner. First of all, I would like to respectively say that I am speaking to you this morning from Ottawa on the traditional territory in unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Nation, one of the first nations in Canada. I'd like to thank you all for being with us today for the launch on this project on the Global Index on Responsible AI. It's a pleasure being with you today. Merci d'être avec nous ce matin pour le lancement de ce nouvel indice mondial de l'intelligence artificielle comes at a very critical time. Two weeks ago, on uh, uh, 24th of November, 193 country members of UNESCO adopted the recommendations on the ethics of artificial intelligence, or AI. AI applications offer a great potential to contribute solutions to global challenges such as the pandemic, climate change, inequalities and other issues captured by the Sustainable Development Goals. And in 2020, IDRC and uh, Sweden's International Development Agency established the Artificial Intelligence for Development Africa program to support research and innovation in AI towards achieving continental, national and global development goals. The research is tackling how to spur startups, improve food systems, enable higher education, and higher quality education, higher education, addressing uh, address pressing health and climate challenges and gender inequality and more. We are really pleased that some of this research conducted by a South African uh, research team at uh, the University of Witwatersrand uh, is using AI research to understand the spread of COVID-19 and respond 
help the government respond to uh, to the the pandemic, including understanding the impact of the evolution of the new variant that was discovered in uh, South Africa by South African researchers, rather. Um, while so while AI becomes a source of comparative advantage on a global scale across many different sectors, and we see that and how it's being used here to, to model the spread of the pandemic, it's also been the source of some tensions, geopolitical tensions, uh, national tensions, and tensions between civil society and private sector and government. Thus, when countries agree on common principles and commit to work together to ensure that these new technologies promote human rights and human dignity, so as with the UNESCO declaration of last uh, month, we need to really acknowledge that this is a very important step in the right direction. At the same time, we know this is not enough and we need to move from principles to practice at the global, national and local level. IDRC is proud to support the creation of the Global Index on Responsible AI that will play an important role in the accountability of countries towards this commitment uh, made uh, last month in, uh, in the context of the UNESCO Declaration and uh, help measure and mobilize change in the long term. The index will address the need to track the implementation of responsible AI principles in practice and measure progress towards its, uh, the responsible use and development of AI in 100 countries around the world uh, from a distinctly human rights based perspective. The Global Index on Responsible AI will provide governments, uh, the community, The, will provide governments, civil society, civil society, and researchers and other key partners uh, to provide uh, necessary data in order to respect the the uh, the values uh, with respect to responsible development of AI, and also the implementation of uh, responsible AI. The new index will also inform uh, the actors that are interested in participating uh, in a responsible practice of these new technologies uh, and civil society organizations as well who want to promote a transparency and uh, the responsibility of decision makers with respect to human rights uh, and equality especially especially equality uh, between the, the genders. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our uh, colleagues, in, uh, including Madame uh, Catherine Godin from uh, Global Affairs Canada at uh, IDRC. We are proud to participate uh, with our colleagues with respect to international development. And since 2018, we've been working closely with Global, Global Affairs Canada to progress uh, Canada's commitment in the promotion of uh, responsible AI. And on the world level, we are doing that thanks to our investment in southern countries. We are very happy to work once again uh, with the Global Affairs Canada on this new project for the creation in, of this index. Uh, also a pleasure to be joined today by many of the organizations that are members of the newly uh, established expert advisory committee that will ensure that the global index is uh, developed to reflect the needs of countries in the global south and key stakeholders in the global agenda, including the OECD, uh, UNESCO, the Global Partnership on AI, the African Digital Rights Hub, and the uh, Feminist Artificial Intelligence Network that's supported by IDRC. I would also like to acknowledge here uh, Research ICT Africa and the Data for Development Network for their leadership on this new Global Index Initiative. It's a pleasure and uh, really important to see this strong leadership, African leadership in advancing the initiative and building on our shared history in investing in uh, digital inclusion and data for development 
uh, with these organizations. So to conclude, I note uh, that the event today is taking place um, on the sidelines of the Summit for Democracy. And the last decade has seen a reduction in the strength and trust in democratic institutions and processes worldwide. Artificial intelligence has sometimes been seen um, and associated with greater political polarization and a decrease in um, that trust and transparency and has been used by authoritarian regimes to target and harm specific groups around the world has been used by the private sector for private gain, uh, not uh, in, in necessarily in the interests of um, groups and, and people around the world. However, we believe that use responsibly, AI can also be part of the solution and making um, uh, organizations, governments, private sector more inclusive, more transparent and more responsive to the needs of the vulnerable. For instance, natural language processing can be an important way to make sure that uh, linguistic minorities have a voice in debates that affect them that they wouldn't otherwise have access to by enabling more equitable participation through these technologies. We are really pleased to be part of uh, this project that's going to be advancing a more responsible approach to artificial intelligence that is rights-based, inclusive, ethical, and sustainable. And I'm looking forward to seeing how today's discussions can inform the leaders uh, of, uh, of government, of private sector, civil society to uh, to our convening as part of the uh, summit to explore really how to move forward in a way that respects that UNESCO um, commitment of, of last month. Thank you very much, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Dominique. Thank you for the great remarks. I will now hand over to Catherine Godin, Director General in the Office of Human Rights, Freedoms and Inclusion at Global Affairs Canada. Thank you very much. Uh, bon après-midi, bon matin, bonne soirée. Um, Good evening. Honorable Deputy Minister Manamela um, and experts and participants to this session. I'm also joining you today from the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. I recognize uh, that we work in different places and that some of you may be joining this event from different traditional indigenous territory. If this is a case, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on and acknowledge this. The advancement of the rights, perspectives and prosperity of indigenous peoples in Canada and around the world is a priority for us. Over the past several years, we've made important strides in this direction, but much work remains to be done. My greeting today aims to echo this recognition. It's a pleasure to represent Canada at this launch on the work of the Global Index on Responsible AI. I would like to give special thanks to you, Dr. Rachel Adams, for your leadership in this project and applaud you and our colleagues from the Data for uh, Development Network Research ICT Africa and the uh, IDRC who have all worked so hard over the past year to get us through this point. While much work re remains to be done, I have no doubt that a team of such high caliber and diversity will deliver on this very significant step to gather evidence and reinforce responsible AI. In this slide, we envisage the index supporting the inclusive, democratic and human rights based governments of AI and digital technology that is critical for all of us has, al has al already been explained. At a time where democracy is receding globally and digital authoritarianism is on the rise, it is more important than ever to work together to ensure the governance of digital technology is built on shared democratic values. On this front, we aim to do our part. Last year, Canada with France launched a global partnership on AI that all of you will know as GPAY. This is a coalition 
of countries and the EU working with experts like you to advance multi-stakeholders and cutting-edge research on issues like responsible AI and pandemic response, climate change, and social media governance, to name just a few examples. It is rooted in the commitment to the rights-based OECD recommendation on AI. Since 2020, Canada has also chaired the Freedom Online Coalition Task Force on AI and Human Rights. We work to foster inclusive dialogue, encourage shared learning, and better coordinate advocacy work on the human rights-based global governance of AI among like-minded countries, civil society organization, academia, and industry partners. And it doesn't stop there. As of 2022 in the month, we will chair the Freedom Online Coalition and work to explore ways to leverage the organization in support of the Global Index on Responsible AI, trying to make those synergies. Our hope is that this work will help shine the light where rights-based norms are being implemented and build awareness and capacity where they might be lagging. We envisage the index serving as an invaluable global benchmark on responsible AI that will encourage governments everywhere to live up to their international obligations and assist businesses as they seek to exercise human rights due diligence. The index will also bolster the rules-based international orders by supporting the mandates of key multilateral and multi-stakeholders organization to implement globally accepted rights-based norms for AI. Perhaps more importantly, this project will empower citizens and civil society organizations in the global South and North to take part in advancing the human rights-based governance of AI systems worldwide. Open, accessible, and timely information is key to supporting public participation and decision-making and essential in improving accountability so that policy reflects people's needs on the ground. Critically, these efforts will support the work of human rights defenders and traditionally marginalized groups that are on the front lines in the fight to advance democratic values globally. Our hope is that the Global Index will be one step, step towards ensuring that most impacted by the digital technologies have a greater say in the governance. As we look forward to our chairship of the Freedom Online Coalition in 2022, we will continue to explore how best to support efforts to uphold human rights and inclusion in the digital age. As part of this, we eagerly look forward to the development of the Global Index on Responsible AI over the coming year. I wish you all the very best in this new endeavor and look forward to listening to the panel today. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Catherine. That's, uh, thank you for very insightful remarks. Uh, I would like to once again thank uh, Deputy Minister Mela, Dominic Sharon, and Kathleen Godin for setting the stage for this event in such an inspiring way. Uh, really great, insightful, uh, important points on why we are here and why we are doing this initiative. Uh, let me look a bit to the slide results. For, thank you for those that uh, answered uh, this, the poll. Uh, we have 40% of uh, the participants coming from the uh, government uh, and a balance between 20% from civil society, 27% from academia. A lot of people, as uh, others as well, as we have uh, many different types of stakeholders. So I think we have a very nice balance between the different uh, types of stakeholders that are needed to move this forward, uh, joining the call. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Rachel Adams from d4d.net and research uh, ICT Africa to present in some more details the plans for the creation of the Global Index for Responsible AI. Uh, please, uh, Rachel. Thank you so much, Fernando, and thank you for the excellent opening remarks from our distinguished representatives from the South African government and Canadian government and from the IDRC. It is so exciting to see so many of you here with us today, so thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Um, let's move to the first slide. So as we have heard in the short video and also from the introductory remarks, AI poses a paradox. 
it offers enormous benefits for advancing society and even achieving the sustainable development goals. But these benefits come with critical risks to the stability of our democracies and the enjoyment and realization of human rights and freedoms. Navigating this paradox requires both the elaboration of ethical principles and legal guidelines founded on the agreed upon system of international human rights law and their implementation in practice through rigorous research and standard setting with all groups involved in decisions around or affected by AI technologies. This is our starting point and where we believe the Global Index comes in. Next slide, please. So the goal of the Global Index on Responsible AI is therefore to advance practice in the development and use of AI that promotes and respects human rights, strengthens democracy and inclusivity and responds to lo local socioeconomic needs. Next slide. The Global Index seeks to measure the evolution of commitment and progress on the implementation of responsible AI principles and practice through addressing the following key questions. Do the conditions exist at a country level to support and promote the responsible use of AI? What does progress look like and can we measure this over time? Next slide. The overall aim of this initiative is fourfold. We will establish human rights based benchmarks for responsible AI and assess country conditions to support and promote its responsible use. In doing so, we will provide key evidence to decision makers around the world to advance responsible AI and promote digital inclusion. Ultimately, our aim is to advance the realization of the principles of responsible and ethical AI through implementation, evaluation and accountability. Next slide, please. Internationally accepted human rights norms and standards are the key underpinning and approach in developing the global index and to inform our understanding of the notion of responsible AI. From the established international human rights canon, we can understand AI, responsibility, uh, AI related responsibilities along these three axes. First, state or government's responsibility to ensure the country conditions for the responsible use of AI by both promoting the responsible development of rights respecting AI systems and providing remedies and redress where rights violations occur. Second, and adopted from the UN RAGI principles on business and human rights, is the corporate responsibility to respect human rights in the development and use of AI by developing and using AI systems in ways that respect human rights across all supply chains. Finally, and of particular importance to the emerging field of AI where broadening who is involved in conversations and decision making is a priority, is the societal responsibility to monitor human rights by users and developers of AI and advocate respect for human rights by all actors. Next slide, please. So this human rights based approach also underpins the core design principles of the Global Index, which are first accessibility and openness. The Global Index must be accessible to other stakeholders and researchers wishing to understand or reuse the data. We will establish an open access data portal to provide users with access to all the data we collect. Second, inclusion and participation. We will develop the Global Index in consultation with a wide range of stakeholders to ensure its value on the ground, with emphasis on including the perspectives and experiences of underserved and marginalized groups. And then thirdly, the Global Index must fairly reflect local contexts and realities, measuring a country's level of responsible AI in relation to available resources. Next slide. So with this in mind, let me take you through the core elements of how the Global Index will be constructed. So building on existing frameworks of AI ethics, including the notable UNESCO recommendation on ethics and AI, which we've heard about, we will establish core human rights based principles to measure responsible AI. 
and holistically assess the extent to which these principles are being applied across core dimensions within the different countries, from governance and capacity to use and impact. We will do this by collecting primary and secondary data around key indicators via two questionnaires, one that is completed by independent country researchers and the other by governments, and both uploaded via a central online data collection portal. The data collection will be undertaken through the establishment of a global network of independent researchers who will report into regional research hubs that will also be established and will in turn vet and peer review the research and data coming from the researchers within their region. The regional hubs will play a key role in ensuring that the results of the index are contextualized, informed by local and regional circumstances and analysis. We will collect data from over 100 countries to inform comparative analysis on both a global and regional level. Next slide, please. So over the next three years, we will design, generate, and then support the use of the index. In the first phase, which we are kicking off today, uh, we will develop a process for the participatory and inclusive design of the global index, which I'll explain in a little, little more detail in the next slide. Our expert advisory committee will play a key oversight role here, and we're very glad to welcome so many members on the panel and here in the audience. During this phase, we will be recruiting for the independent country researchers and the regional hubs. So do look out for the open calls towards the end of the first quarter of 2022 on our Twitter accounts and project webpage. By the end of 2022 and early 2023, we hope to have generated the first edition of the Global Index with a report benchmarking responsible AI policy and practice in over 100 countries around the world. This will be followed by regional and thematic reports developed with our regional partners. In 2024, we will be advancing, is those years right? Oh no, 2023, sorry, we will be advancing the use of the index on the ground and supporting the adoption of responsible AI by working with regional hubs, human rights groups and governments to engage with the index findings and focus capacity building efforts in targeted areas. This phase will also include a review and an evaluation of the first edition of the index. Next slide, please. The strength of the Global Index lies in its utility in shifting the dial from principles to practice on the ground, and we need your help to help us do that. Over the next few months, we will be engaging in a broad consultative process with a diverse range of stakeholders to better understand how the Global Index can be of value on the ground for different groups and in different parts of the world. This requires us to listen to the differential experiences of and with AI in various contexts. This engagement process will include regional workshops facilitated with the regional hubs, engagement with human rights organizations, women's rights groups and marginalized communities, as well as policymaker user group consultations. This is certainly not an exhaustive list, and we would love to hear from you about any upcoming forums we could participate in or any ideas you have for reaching communities not adequately represented in discussions around AI to date. Please do get in touch with us directly through the email address here, raii at d4d.net. Information about the upcoming engagement events will be posted on d4d.net with regular updates on both Twitter accounts on the screen. We really look forward to hearing from you. Please advance the closing slide and I'm going to hand back to you, Fernando. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. That was, uh, this is great. Uh, we are now going to move into the discussion portion of today's event uh, with our steam panel of speakers. Uh, we will engage with both uh, our panelists and yourself, the audience, here in this event using this Slido tool. Uh, as Rachel said, uh, we are very keen to hear from you and, and some questions there that are, we are putting on the poll on Slido. Uh, please join us the conversation there. Uh, the first question that's already there is, uh, why would the Global Index on Responsible AI be useful for you at this particular moment in time? So we want to hear from you and this will help shape. Meanwhile, we have, uh, we're gonna work on these questions as well with some of the panelists here and allow me to introduce them. 
First, uh, uh, panelists, uh, thank you for joining us, Daphna, Dr. Daphna Penholz from UNESCO, Karim uh, Preset from OECD, uh, Tech Creative from the African Digital Rights Hub, Professor Paola Ricardo Kijano from the Feminist AI Research Network, and Jack uh, Hajat from SEMIA in, in the Global Partnership on AI. Uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation and I hand it over to you, Rachel, to, to lead the discussion with our panelists. Thank you so much, um, Fernando. And, and Daphna, I, I'd like to start with you because we are all so very excited about the recent development with the UNESCO recommendation and its adoption by the UN, uh, by the UNESCO General Assembly. So we, we'd like to ask you about how the Global Index might support UNESCO in establishing benchmarks around the common principles of AI ethics set out in the recommendation and tracking its implementation uh, in countries around the world. Over to you, Daphna. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Rachel, and thank you very much uh, for this invitation. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that uh, we are de definitely very, very excited about this very recent achievement. Uh, there were two very, very particular years. Um, it, uh, this is the first time that we uh, produced a normative instrument in two years uh, during COVID and virtually and on a, such a sensitive and important topic. And, uh, and most important, uh, being able to make sure that uh, 193 countries can agree on not only on a set of values and principles, but also on very concrete uh, policy areas. On, uh, and so it, it will be able, we will be able to, to um, translate into concrete practices uh, the, these uh, principles and values. And we also have developed and are starting to develop some concrete uh, tools, which are, I think, also part of the ones that we are going to be able to be working together more closely. So uh, it was uh, approved by a standing ovation, which is also something that is very impressive because, uh, as you could imagine, during the process of negotiation, this was not an easy, an easy ride, but it, it just showed that everyone understood that this is something that can be very useful uh, for everyone, and it's quite ambitious. Um, and I, I have to say that is a member to be uh, and, and to be today with all the, the, the speakers, but also to be members of the steering committee with uh, organizations that we are already have good collaborations like OECD, GPI, the Femi Feminist Network, and in fact, Techie is uh, one of the independent experts who participated in uh, producing this, uh, ex this uh, document, and Canada as such has been always an important uh, player, uh, particularly in the consultation process. Probably something I would like to say before I go into the concrete uh, answer to your question, because I will, <laughs> uh, don't worry, is uh, I just wanted to underline uh, some of the things that are uh, quite aligned between the global index and, and the, the recommendation. Uh, the, the fact that we are coming from the ethics, I want to also explain that uh, because sometimes it's not very clear what we mean. So it's not only a code of principles, uh, it's, uh, it's also, a, and most important, it's a process of make decision making and it's a constant process of reflection that needs to accompany uh, the, the, the development of technologies to make sure what is the impact of these technologies, both on humans and the environment, which I also see is very important from the global index and is something that is also an added value we think about this recommendation because it's not always not only about to think how to make find solutions for environmental issues, but also how to avoid harming more our environment by, in, by the use of these technologies, uh, either by uh, eating a lot of of the mineral resources that we already uh, extinguished from the earth or the energy consumption, etc. And this constant reflection that accompanies the development of technologies is there 
to make sure that we all the time respect human rights, the sustainable environment, uh, sustainable uh, sustainability of our planet, and and also during the whole life system of the AI, which I, uh, it's also very important that to underline. It's not only at certain moments, but it's already from the conception of it and the, uh, in its implementation and uh, also how we evaluate and how we decide and why we decide to stop using it. And the idea is to make sure that through all this life cycle, this reflection ensures that these technologies are promoting human rights, the environment and ecosystem sustainability, super important diversity and inclusivity is one of the values uh, that are non-negotiable as well as peaceful and uh, interconnected societies. So, and this reflection and decision on whether these technologies are, are that are, are applying are, are really uh, are complying with these foundation and values should include all those who are affected by these technologies. So in this sense, inclusivity and diversity has been one of the main issues of how this, this document was produced with first 24 experts from all over the world with different backgrounds, then very wide consultations with all the stakeholder possible uh, in the different uh, regions of the world, and uh, uh, not only virtual, but also online. We got more than 50,000 uh, responses, uh, and in particular emphasis was put, uh, of course, and, and this is the only one that includes the Global South, so for us, the, and, and as you know, Africa and gender and two are two of the priorities of UNESCO. So this is also something that is particularly important, plus the, the, the um, uh, environmental uh, dimension that is very important. We did put a lot of emphasis, and I'm happy because Canada has always been very vocal about the need to include uh, indigenous populations and all, all the marginalized ones. Uh, and of course, gender uh, and gender gender dimensions, as I said. One of the most important things that we want to do with this recommendation, as I said, is to really make sure that we build capacities at the national level, uh, at all levels, uh, meaning at the level of the governments, but also the meaning at, at, the, at the educational level. We, we really want to know, want to make sure that people who are developing these technologies or those who are uh, uh, doing now the decisions about the about the policies or those who will be doing them, they will all be aware of everything that is uh, in, in all the ethical issues that are uh, relevant and all these principles and, and all these values that I have uh, uh, I refer to. So we are building two concrete uh, uh, two concrete tools. One is the readiness uh, methodology and the other one is the ethical impact assessment. So in the first one, we want to know uh, where countries stand in order to embrace these technologies uh, and, and, and find where are the gaps and how we can help them there with concrete capacity building activities. Uh, so I think one of the things that we now coming to your question, something that I think uh, we can work together, uh, the Global Index and UNESCO, is doing research and helping develop the dimensions, uh, particularly the indicators for each of the dimensions of the readiness methodology. And the dimensions that we are contemplating is scientific, technological, economic, educational, legal, regulatory, so societal and cultural. So, for example, for the regulatory dimension to, under, to understand the map of AI related legislations around the world, deciding what are the important measurable aspects by including the methodology in this regard, capitalizing the regional and national research, research contacts in order to develop the social and community based aspect of this methodology. Uh, because we want, for example, to uh, in the social societal aspects, we, we plan to examine how inclusive is uh, AI uh, domain, for example, for women. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, with the AI impact assessment is basically the same thing. Uh, we want to, to make sure how these technologies are impacting uh, these techno these, uh, these different uh, groups of society. So I think since both of us want to ensure that uh, 
we we build capacities and we build institutions and we build strong in, uh, strong uh, tools uh, and strong capacity building uh, activities, we can work together and particularly in to come up with indicators that will allow us to conduct this work in a more effective way. Uh, I will stop here. Thank you so much, Daphna. There's such incredible work going on here and for everyone, please do watch this space and we're glad for all the synergies that I can see coming through. Um, Karine, I'd now like to, to turn to you and the work of the OECD.AI Policy Observatory um, in leading um, the support around international cooperation on trustworthy AI. So we, we wanted to ask you, Karine, how the global industry can support the work um, of the OECD Observatory and in parallel how the OECD Observatory can help inform the work of the Global Index. Um, thank you Rachel. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone um, and, and thank you very much for the invitation to participate and fantastic overviews so far. Uh, congratulations to UNESCO on its achievement earlier this week and and, and, and I hadn't realized how, how broad and how, how much you're, you're, you're aiming to accomplish, which is a, a very impressive. Um, I also very much agree with uh, what Dominic said earlier on, um, on that, you know, a, using AI responsibly can be part of the solution and making organizations, uh, government organizations and the private sector more inclusive, more transparent and more responsive to the need of the vulnerable. So with that said, on the first part of your question, we believe that the new Global Index on Responsible AI is a very promising initiative with great potential to complement existing efforts to advance the development and use of trustworthy AI. Efforts that were and we have been undertaking, but that a lot of partner organizations has, have also been undertaking. And, and this is an area where we need everybody uh, to join forces. It's not I think it's really not one organization that is going to I think we, we, we want we have uh, all of us on this panel and beyond this panel, other partner organizations are working towards broadly the same goals, which is really to help countries and AI actors implement trustworthy AI. Uh, that is AI that is innovative and respects human rights and democratic values um, and that's uh, inclusive. Um, and so having that same vision calls for close cooperation on initiatives like the Global Index being launched today and what, what you said. Um, and leverage, really leveraging each other's work because uh, we all have different mandates uh, and different competencies and we can't all do everything. And so that's why we have to work together is really a firm belief that I have. And I think um, I can say uh, this on, on behalf of the OECD as well that we have as the OECD. So concretely from the OECD perspective, we very much look forward to the global index complementing some of our measurement work uh, we've been advancing on OECD.AI uh, by helping to track and monitor areas that are traditionally quite hard to measure and what you're uh, undertaking is quite hard to measure. Um, we've, uh, we, we, we would also uh, like to link that we think we can uh, link this work also to work we've been undertaking since 2018 on the AI system lifecycle and classifying AI systems according to their impact on people and planet, human rights and well-being. Um, and again, one those those harder to measure components that you've mentioned include really public perceptions of inclusion in AI, fairness, risks to human rights and democratic values, labor market concerns, as well as perceived gaps in AI education skills and infrastructure resources such as connectivity and computing power. And you know, whereas the work of the OECD in the context of OECD.AI tends to be the ra rather upstream, let's say, in the policy cycle, the global index would we we feel is is going to be tremendously valuable uh, through its downstream field measurements and the resulting indicators. And in addition, the geographic coverage of the network and independent researchers that will be leveraged to build the global index will bring that critical local dimension. And finally, the global index could help inform the work of uh, uh, another initiative, an uh, important initiative that we have, uh, which is called globalpolicy.ai. And it's a, it's a platform that uh, has been worked on over the past two years. And we recently launched with eight intergovernmental organizations with complementary mandates on AI 
um, the, the United Nations, the World Bank, uh, the OECD, uh, Inter-American Development Bank, um, Co uh, Council of Europe, European Commission, as well as the fundamental rights agencies. Um, and, and we hope global, uh, uh, the, the, we hope uh, as soon as possible, we had um, a GPA in the initiative, but we hope that we can soon bring back GPA. It's there in the back end. We hope GPA can be a partner in this as well. Um, with these complementary mandates to help policymakers and the navigate and the public navigate uh, the international AI governance landscape, which is a little bit complicating and a little bit complicated from a national policymaker perspective, and getting more complicated by the day. Let's say it, it's just to help them understand the linkages between all of these initiatives, and there are many. And again, uh, you know, the the goals are the same. Uh, in many cases, th there are differences, of course, pertaining to the different mandates of these different organizations. But um, one of the goals of globalpolicy.ai is to provide resources to contribute to achieving sustainable development goals um, and ensure that AI systems are aligned with human rights and dem democratic values. So we think the Global Index and IDRC would be ideal partners uh, with you know, uh, and, and with globalpolicy.ai in this regard and vice versa, globalpolicy.ai could provide this broad reach and awareness through its membership, uh, which again covers large, large intergovernmental organizations. Um, and I, 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 uh, I, I, uh, regarding your, I'm sorry, I'm, I hope I'm not running over time. I haven't um, tracked very well, but regarding your second question, I'll, I'll be brief on how OECD.ai can help inform the global index. I see three key areas. Uh, first, um, you know, our experience helping countries to implement the OECD AI principles, which we've been working on for three years now, uh, since the uh, since the AI the OECD AI principles were were adopted in uh, in May 2019, um, uh, and then were endorsed. Uh, so. Were, in, were, were, were adopted uh, by 46 countries, um, including OECD countries and a number of other countries, including major actors, players like the US that alone contributes over 55% of the high quality AI scientific publications in AI and over half of venture capital investments in AI. And, and you know, I name it, it, it's an important player um, and, and China is also an important player and, and this, in this measurement work, the quantitative measurement we've been undertaking, um, you know, you, you, we really need to include those, those, those key actors because what they do or don't do has such a tremendous impact on the rest of the world. So anyways, back to the principles. These were committed to by uh, the OECD, uh, G20 member countries and a number of other countries. Um, and uh, we think that the data that we've uh, managed to uh, process to date could help, um, uh, could help, uh, and we're delighted to share it, of course. Second, the existing database of national pol AI policies uh, and the live data on OECD.ai, um, which covers over 120 countries on areas like AI research, jobs and skills, education, search trends, investments in software development, uh, and we're working on many others, could help not only inform the design of the index, but also serve as supporting evidence for the expert assessments that we expect will 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 match to some extent these uh, these data these this different data uh, the, these data uh, these indicators showing you know the development of AI ecosystems from different vantage points. Um, and third, as we embark on uh, the construction of the global index on responsible AI. We could also tap into the collective knowledge of, of the OECD.ai network of over 200 AI experts from all stakeholder groups. And this, I think, is also would also is also an area uh, uh, where uh, collaborating with uh, the Glo uh, Global Partnership on AI, which uh, shares you know many experts and and is also has a hosting uh, arrangement with the OECD, could be very valuable. So leverage. Uh, some of that expertise, you know, in the measurement and index building exercise. Um, to give an example, the uh, the methodology we use at the OECD uh, to construct one of our flag flagship products, which is the Better Life Index, the OECD Better Life Index, could be useful. Uh, and there and there are many more. Um, so those th through those those three areas and more, we 
we really look forward to contributing to the, the Global Index on Responsible AI. Thanks. And I'm, apologies if I went over my time. Thank you so, so much, Corinne. Yeah, the OECD has been doing absolutely foundational work here. And thank you for highlighting the shared commitment and goals, which is something I think the UNESCO uh, recommendation also encompassed so well. So, Fernando, should we turn quickly to see what the results have been uh, on the Slido question um, and pose the next one? Yes, uh, we have some responses from the Slido and uh, one of the participants highlight here uh, great that is in Spanish, please also use the language of your choice, uh, mentioning that uh, uh, Latin America is extremely an equal continent, shake democracies and the adoption of technology for security purpose without control happens all the time. So understanding the regulation and this and this in this type of technology is key. And so the, 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 the index is key to help the, them on their work in the region. Uh, they also, there is also a comment here on the index can help to strengthen national sovereignty over the development and implementation of AI driven solutions that will promote development needs from the global south rather than the commercial interests from big tech and benchmarks from global north. So I guess changing that perspective is also great, great comments from the others. And please join us on, on, on Slido because you now have a new pool there. Uh, asking you a bit more on the challenges. What are the challenges that you see that you need to consider when thinking about measuring responsible AI in the different contexts? And uh, I'm looking forward for your answers on that poll. And I hand it over to you, back to you, Rachel, to move us also to discuss about these 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 issues with our panelists. Great, thank you so much. Such interesting answers coming through. So, uh, Teki, I'd like to come to you to kind of dig deeper into some of these questions around the measuring AI in, in different contexts. Um, within the African continent, there's, there's been a, a lot of growth around developing new strategies and governance tools to promote the development in AI in ways that support or advance national development priorities. So how might the Global Index in your perspective support some of this emerging work? And how can we also ensure that we take into account the experiences of African countries and diverse African communities in relation to AI. Thank you very much, Rachel, and I'm extremely excited about the work that you're doing and the entire work which is happening from UNESCO to the ecosystem. Um, I believe maybe about a decade ago, we were not talking about the ethics of AI, and today we're having these discussions which have even progressed to steps uh, to measure. I can definitely see a lot of help uh, with, with the global index in supporting how African governments are developing strategies, which is one of the things that, that is currently happening in the ecosystem. Uh, definitely for nothing at all, it can provide some guiding um, tools around what kind of areas, you know, we should be looking at, especially uh, areas that will be measured. And, and I think that it really gives a lot of grounding uh, because I think that so far with a lot of the strategies that we are looking at, um, a number of the values and the human rights values are missing. And so it will definitely provide some strong grounding on the importance of the human rights elements as well. But, but at the same time, um, I, I would like to caution um, that, you know, the index is a good thing, but looking back um, after I got to know about the index, I've been reading a bit more around African countries and and our attitudes and our government's attitudes towards, um, you know, such indices usually when they come out, especially when it's going to monitor uh, our respective countries. And, and the challenges have always been uh, that, you know, our countries and our leaders and our governments do not feel that there is a necessary buy-in. And so you would see that whether it's a corruption index or any other index, there's a lot 
of a kick uh, back at these indices, especially when the results are coming out, which may not necessarily mean that the results coming out from these indices are wrong, but I think that if we, the ultimate aim of this index is not necessarily to measure countries, but also to get countries to actually work on themselves and then improve themselves uh, within the AI ecosystem in their respective countries. And so I think the biggest challenge that faces uh, that we face as, as the index is, is to ensure that there is the buy-in, the necessary buy-in of the governments and the critical stakeholders. And that buy-in as well will more or less facilitate um, you know, the use and the utilization of information, of the critical information that, that is going to come out of this. So by and large, this is a very good initiative. It really helps, especially with the countries that want to know really where am I standing and, and want to have that bold step of, of taking that objective look at themselves and their countries and where they are standing. It will give them the opportunity to be able to have that assessment done. But I I think because of the impact that this ha has on the whole on the continent and, and because of the peculiar nature that we find our continent in, which is we are one of the few, uh, you know, continents that are almost late in the day when it comes to uh, the kind of issues that are being discussed around AIs, around AI strategies, around the ethical and, and, and value issues that should be taken into consideration. We also also need to ensure that we effectively engage and then bring on board as many of the views. And I think, you know, not to overemphasize, but for me, I think the work has to be on getting the necessary buy-in from our community so that uh, the tool will be extremely useful to us. Thank you, Techie. I think that's an absolutely necessary emphasis and, and something that we are taking as a kind of key priority um, to include uh, those stakeholders as, as priority stakeholders to ensure that this index has value where it needs to have value and has utility where it needs to have utility. Um, so thank you for that. And, and Paula, I, I'd like to turn to you now. Um, you, you've been contributing significantly to advancing thinking around how ideas of decolonization and feminism can better inform more inclusive approaches to digitalization and the governance of AI. So what steps might we consider and should we consider at the outset of the design of this index in order to advance and support decolonial and feminist agendas on AI? Um, well, um, first, I'm very glad to be here celebrating the launch of this amazing project. And I believe it's very important for us, people and countries of the South. And I also believe that this project and also the recommendation of the ethics of AI developed by the UNESCO, um, it's, it's, it's a sign that we are reaching a milestone. So thank you very much, Rachel for your leadership, for the invitation to participate in this final and for this very hard question. <laughs> and I always struggle thinking about where should we start because as you know, we are facing many challenges. So among those challenges, I think that for any initiative emerging from the global south is addressing the stakes involved in the development and use of AI and the differentiated consequences for populations and countries of the South. So starting with that debate, with that honest debate about what it entails in terms of responsibilities and co-responsibilities would be a very good first step. So one of the main challenges uh, we face in proposing a global ethical index for AI is as someone mentioned before, is how to put at the center the values of, of the common good, the public good of historically marginalized population in the global discussion. Yeah. So how can we highlight these asymmetries between the actors who currently govern the development of AI and the countries and populations who have no say in the decision making on the development and the use of artificial intelligence? But who actually bear the cost of technological development. So 
how are we going to dispute those geopolitical interests associated with market interest, as someone mentioned uh, in the questions before? So this includes also the question of when AI should be used and when it should be prohibited, for example. So another important point related to the previous one is to understand the tensions and alliances that exist on the one hand at the global level and on the other within nation states. So for me that um, I, I work with the decolonial framework, coloniality <laughs> is an important category to, to include in this discussion. Uh, coloniality as the logic of domination that has been maintained since historical colonialism has two facets. One is a force that is exerted from the outside towards the states, towards the nation states. And on the other hand, from the states themselves towards their populations. So in this sense, in order, in order to propose a global index on AI, it's necessary to consider both processes and to be clear about this dispute and these alliances between global interests and national interests. So this brings me to my last point. Um, I think another issue for reflection should be how to prevent AI for being a necropolitical tool, both globally and nationally. Uh, so we must identify the different forms of violence associated with the development of AI at these different levels, not only in the operation of technology itself, it's the sign or the data that is collected or the models that are used. Um, but also to consider this structural violence globally. So how this violence is being reproduced at the global and the local levels. So going back to the idea of, of uh, violence, um, I think we should refer to violence that can go from physical violence, for example, in the use of automatic weapons, uh, epistemic violence and social violence. So if we consider that violence is multidimensional, we also have to consider if we want to measure that violence, how those countries and, and governments are using AI, AI to reproduce uh, those different types of violence. So in this scenario, uh, what should we do? Um, of course, we need to support research and innovation. And in this regard, the index can provide us, countries and populations of the South, with the data that is necessary to ensure that all stakeholders are accountable for the development and deployment of AI. And also so that we can actively participate in defining the future of AI. So the index can help us identify the global patterns that emerge and the possibilities of creating South-South networks of collaboration to address common concerns. So on the other side, of course, we should promote projects that materialize those values. For example, with the A-plus Alliance and the Feminist uh, Artificial Intelligence Research Network, we are also launching a new project called Incubating Feminist AI with the support of IDRC. So we are very, very lucky because over the next three years, we will support proposals from different regions of the Global South, which will try to implement feminist values in the design and development of AI technologies. So um, I think if we can just together put uh, find ways to collaborate and to try to implement and also do research on, on these common issues, it would be the best way to explore possible paths so that we can have the opportunity to imagine alternative technological futures. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. That was really excellent and thank you for reminding us of the importance of tracing forms of power who ai is being used against who has the privilege to claim their rights and who doesn't these are all really important questions for us so so thank you for that and look forward to seeing the work of the incubating feminist ai project um fernando should we turn back to the slido and see what responses we have on these considerations for measuring responsible ai in different country contexts yeah, so you got a very participative group uh, answering to this question, so thank you for our replies. Uh, 
there are a number of uh, issues here, and you can see all of them in more detail in the in, in, as you answer that them directly on the slide. But there are a few things that I would like to highlight here. Uh, I, I think that having a sound understanding of local context and local realities become a key recurrent issue in the in the replies, and how they can this can inform our conceptual understanding of what constitutes responsible use of AI. You know? uh, there are important differences between countries, uh, cultures, social political aspects, etc. So, for instance, asking questions on political parties and elections when some countries have no political parties or they are not uh, democracies might be a, a challenge in fact, as an example. Each country is different in the stage of development as well, so progress in, in one context is going to look different in progress in another country context. Uh, digital literacy uh, also in Africa and in other places, I, I would add, in is a key consideration, particularly about marginalized communities, rural communities, and understanding gender gaps, as we discussed. I guess many of these issues that resonate quite well with the points uh, by our panelists. So, so, and thank you for for joining the the slide call. The slide poll. I will move to the next one, and the the next poll uh, will be. Uh, what are the priorities for you uh, uh, in terms of uh, measuring the global index? What are the things that you must cover in measuring the, the, in, the, in, this, in this process? And you're going to build a word cloud on that one. So short answers will, will build a, a nice uh, visualization from your inputs. Uh, I will move there, there and hand it over to this pool. Uh, please join us on the on slide. And I hand it back to you, Rachel, for, for continuing the panel. Thanks, Fernando. And, and I'm going to ask a similar question to all the panelists in, in a moment. Um, but Jacques, I, I'd like to turn to you as our final panelist and continue that question about who is involved in the conversation. So I'd like to ask you about how the Global Index might support the work of GPA in, in broadening membership, particularly of Global South governments. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel, for the opportunity to come and present the perspective of GP, uh, but also to be part of this initiative. And we, we are pleased to be uh, have the ability to join on the committee uh, to provide some insight, at least, you know, from our own perspective at GP. Um, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm very supportive of many of the comments that were made by the previous panelists because we're all like-minded organizations. So uh, many of those comments are also very much aligned with the vision of the GP and the SINDA. Um, but because GP is a new organization, I'll take a few seconds just at least to position GP in the ecosystem because we're just a little over one year old. So it's not necessarily very well known by all the community, the AI community around the world. Um, so first, I'm the uh, executive director of the SINDA. SINDA is one of the two center of expertise uh, under the global partnership on AI. Uh, and there, the other center is based in Paris. The two centers of expertise are responsible to operationalize GP by coordinating applied AI projects initiated by the expert working group. So we also support steering committee in the council with governance related matters, including the evaluation of new member state application. And I'll come back to that later. Um, with respect to GP, uh, the GP core mission is to bring together countries that share the same values around the positive vision of intergovernmental and multi-sector collaboration for the responsible development and use of AI, but specifically in the context of promoting applied AI project, which is complementary to work of other organizations like, for instance, you know, the OECD, with which you know, we collaborate very closely uh, in, these pro um, in, in connection with these projects. Currently, a GP has 25 countries representing a population of about 3 billion people. Uh, and the intention of GPA is to be as inclusive and to bring together as many countries as possible uh, that share its core value. So that process of in, in, uh, increasing the membership of GPA um, has, uh, because the center of expertise have had the responsibility to evaluate your know, member state application. So I have personal experience that underpinning what is commitment to responsible AI is a very delicate and sensitive task. Currently, we are using, I think it's it's a com composite of about 11 different indexes trying to come to some uh, assessments. So I'm sure that the global AI uh, um, 
index on the Google index on responsible AI could become a very useful tool. So specifically, maybe what are our hope, uh, our vision of what the global index could help uh, us with at the GP in terms of achieving its vision. Uh, first, I think uh, maybe uh, linking to what Keki was saying, uh, by providing a perspective from the Global South on how responsible AI should be measured. So I think the buy-in from the Global South is quite important. Uh, many indexes are currently based on the North, therefore having a broader input, which would, uh, would be very useful for the credibility of the process. So it could become a great tool for us to promote uh, inclusiveness within the GP. Uh, a clearer view of where principles are being put into practice including a closer and more integrated view on how responsible AI, uh, responsible AI principle and human rights law intersects, because many indexes have not yet quite bridged this nexus between you know, human rights and AI principle. Um, we also hope that the new global index uh, will be comprehensive uh, in our experience. Oops, sorry, the page went down. Um, we also hope that the new global index on AI will be more comprehensive because our experience that most available AI index are quite patchy when it comes, you know, outside of the top 20 AI leaders in the world. So having more information, more, uh, more comprehensive information will be very useful for us. Um, lastly, uh, I'd like to, rem to remind that GP has a mandate regarding addressing the needs of the global south. So it's easy to frame the collaboration of about the cutting edge, but many countries also need to catch up. In other words, the future is already um, here, but it's not evenly distributed. So hopefully the new global index on responsible AI can help us understand better where and how we can help, especially from the perspective of GPA that we are developing enabling solution to promote you know, the development and use of responsible AI to our the applied AI project. Uh, and finally, you know, at the recent GP summit, we heard from many experts from the Global South on how GP can help uh, low-middle middle income countries to address gap in their responsible AI practice, including the legal gap. The work that we are uh, currently doing, such as the data justice framework, which will be piloted in early 2022 in 12 countries from the Global South, and the IDRC sponsor Global South resident fellows at the SEMIA, is part of our contribution to this objective. So we are pleased that the Global uh, Index on Responsible AI will also recognize this need. And we are grateful of the opportunity to contribute to its development. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacques. It's really interesting to learn more about GPA's work and, and of course, all the shared agendas that, that we have here. So I'd like to come back to all our panelists to, to pose the question that's been asked in the Slido about what priority areas or issues you would like to see addressed in the Global Index. And I'm going to ask for very quick responses from you all. Please just give us one priority area you would like to see covered. And I'm going to start with Daphna and follow the same order. So over to you, Daphna. That's tricky because all of them are very important. <laughs> um, I guess the, the part of the diversity and inclusivity, we, because we'll include the, the different voices, the differences in the systems, uh, the differences in the in the violences, the, and I think that's why I would put uh, my emphasis there. And also Thanks. because it include the diversity in humanity, but also in the environment. So maybe yeah. that's why we'll choose that one. That, that's a really important aspect of, of the UNESCO recommendation. So thank you for highlighting it. It is a bit of a trick question, but let's go with it. Karine, what is your priority area you would like to see addressed? Rachel, I'm sorry, one is impossible, but I'll go really quickly. I, I, I'll go really fast. <laughs> In our perspective, I think it would be remarkable if, uh, if, if the index could cover three uh, main two two main two main uh, um, areas, and this also reflects input from really important parts of the OECD, which work closely with us, which are the Development Assistance Committee, uh, which is a large part of the OECD that brings together all the development community 
um, and the Development Centre, which are very much focused, and, and many other sub-organisations of those parts of the OECD, which are very much focused uh, which, uh, on, 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 uh, on the Global South. And so first, to develop indicators of implementation related to values-based AI principles, such as inclusion, public trust, sustainability of AI technologies, as uh, Daphna mentioned, mentioned security and respect for human rights and democratic values. Um, and second, to collect data on the perceived gaps by a representative networks, network of experts, especially with regards to education, skills, funding for research and development, infrastructure, that's very important for us, testing and as part of this infrastructure, access to computing power that's necessary for AI, um, and importantly, testing environments or test beds. Um, so I stop it there. Thank okay. you. It, all, all important. Um, Techie. I, I think for me, the, the most important I would like to see covered would be human rights issues. And um, I know that is broad, but I, I don't think any human rights should be left out. So it would be extremely important to have that covered. Thank you, Teki. Uh, Paula? Um, yeah, I, I'm probably Team Davna. I would say, um, again, gender violence, epistemic violence, and, and the environment. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. And, and Jacques? Yeah, again, very much aligned with Teki. I think the intersection between human rights and responsible AI is key, at least from our perspective. But also I'd like to reinforce what I just mentioned before also is that the, hopefully the global index will help us identify potential basis for collaboration where we see gaps in other parts of the world. How can we actually join forces and share knowledge and common objectives? So finding a way to present the global index, not just from a ranking point of view, but from an opportunity point of view in terms of collaboration, for us that would be just amazing. Thank you so much, Jacques, and thank you to all the panellists for an excellent panel and kickstarting our consultation process today. Fernando, back to you. Many thanks, Rachel. This was a fantastic session. It's such a valuable amount of insights from all the speakers, and attendees uh, really loved it. Uh, some of the questions that were made on our platform, uh, colleagues try to respond to answer that directly in the platform uh, and we will find other opportunities to engage with you all in that conversation. Uh, we are running a bit out of time, so but the, uh, as Rachel mentioned in the presentation, this is just the beginning of the conversations and we would like to have you all interested stakeholders as we design the development of the Global Index on Responsible AI uh, and make sure that this has value on the ground uh, as, as we move from principles to practice. Please, please follow up on, on the conversation via the Global Index, RAI, uh, or D4D.net um, uh, Twitter accounts. And if you'd like to get in touch with us about the consultation, please contact us at, at uh, RAII at D4D.net. Uh, We'd, like, we'd love to get you involved and uh, we'd like to thank you all our distinguished speakers and uh, panelists for their excellent contributions to today's discussions. Uh, and lastly, events like these don't just happen and we'd like very much to thank all those at IDRC, Researchers City Africa, G4D.net and ai for the africa for their hard work in making this event happen. Uh, your inputs today and the forthcoming months will be critical in shaping this initiative. And uh, and I'll leave you with the the, the word cloud uh, with that was constructed during this uh, conversation with the the answers we got in terms of priority measures for uh, for for our global index. So so have a great rest of your day and thank you. <laughs>